Yo, Elliot, I don't know if I can fully trust my wife. Most of the times things are good, but I feel as if she might not be fully interested. I'm developing with this woman, so things are going fast, but I have a feeling she might not be totally invested uh, in me when she claims to be and certain behaviors to uphold that. She seems motivated at times. She looks into things I give her. She loves talking to me about what she found out and asks me questions for guidance. I explain this to paint the picture halfway, but the other half is my gut feeling with her and a weird situation going on with her and her ex. He keeps showing up to her house, either with gifts or try to talk to her. This happened three or four times during the span of our relationship. She says this would be the last time this happens, but that was also said the last couple times it happened. The way she deals with this situation doesn't seem right. And why is this happening in the first place? Why is she even talking to this guy when she gets on her, when he gets on her property uninvited? She's wonderful, but I hate that there's an ugly side to her that has the potential to be abrasive. I'm not in a position of authority fully just yet, but I want to be with someone that can see my growth. Appreciate it and re reciprocate well. Sometimes it feels lonely in a relationship when she gets abrasive or ungrounded. I'm ranting on what's getting me in this gut feeling, but I'd like to hear what you, what you think about it. So I'm assuming she's not your wife, but you're having sex with her and that's why you're calling her your wife. My dad was giving me a hard time about that the other day because <laughs> he know you know he hears me make these videos sometimes and he thinks I, some things I say is ridiculous. Yeah, maybe it is, uh, but but he's like, hey, hey, your wife, if you just having sex with her. But I make that claim. In other words, don't have sex with a woman that you wouldn't make your wife, right? And so I know you're not here, so I can't ask you completely. But my assumption is that this is not your wife, and she lives outside of your house. The minute you said he keeps showing up to her house with gifts and tries to talk to her. That, that, I paused there for a moment because I'm like, that's a red flag, right? She's not yours. She's not yours, and I'm not sure I would want to make her mine if I were you. Three, four times this happened. All that needs to happen is once. All that needs to happen is once, and you drop the axe. You say, whoa, okay, maybe we didn't speak about this. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. You give people grace. Maybe I wasn't clear about my expectations for this relationship. But now that we are in relationship and even though you have no authority over her because she's not your wife and really you have no authority to even say the things I'm about to say, um, but you can put it out there, right? There's a, you know, a dangling carrot. Like if you want me to marry you, then this is, you got to follow these, uh, you got you to gotta follow these rules. You got to get in line with what I'm expecting of a woman that I would marry, right? Uh, and you say, well, then you need to delete, and I want to see you delete his phone number. I want to see you delete him from your, your, your Facebook or whatever, or anything like that. And if this ever happens again, right? And this is just, this is not being mean. This is being plain. This is being straight. This is being real. If this happens again, our relationship is over. When men start having that kind of integrity, when men start seeing themselves as the prize, as the prize, we'll no longer tolerate this kind of behavior because you have an abundance mindset and you realize, I don't need to be with you, right? I don't need to be with you. There's many, many other women out there. And dare I say, those that would be a good wife, right? That would make a good uh, prospect for marriage. She don't make a good prospect for marriage. Not only did this happen once, twice, three times, four times, but it don't seem like it's going to stop, right? You say she's talking to this guy all the time, right? She's, uh, and you say she's wonderful, but I hate that there's an ugly side to her. First things first, and I've said it a bunch of times today, and I've said it many times in the past. I'm going to say it again right now. Stop having sex with her. You got to stop having sex with her. You got to stop having sex with them. Part of the reason why men don't recognize their value is because they give it away when they have sex with these women and they become addicted to her sex. When you pull away from the, the taking of her drugs, 
right? Because that's what it is. The, the, if you look at what happens in the brain when you orgasm, it's the same as taking a shot of heroin. Check it out. Look up, there's YouTube videos about like the neurobiology of orgasm and it's, it, they related it to like uh, pornography and fapping and stuff like that. Just look up stuff like that on YouTube. You'll find it. There are scientists that talk about this. It's the same thing that happens in your brain when you use heroin is the same thing that happens when you use when you have sex. And so you're addicted like a drug addict. And you know what? The drug dealer can be as abrasive, could be as grumpy, could be as dismissive as he wants to the drug addict, right? You know what? In fact, the drug dealer usually has disdain for the drug addict, right? Not that I know any drug dealers or drug addicts, but I've seen these movies, you know, like Boys in the Hood and stuff like that. Ah, suck your man, right? You ever see that guy? Crack addict, right? Ugh, get away from me, man. Get out of here, right? Come on, man. I need my hit. Give me something, man. So when you have that little crackhead on the inside for that sex, you put up with garbage. You put up with bad behavior. When you break your addiction to that, you can start seeing rightly, right? Imagine that. Imagine the drug dealer and the drug addict. And let's say that the drug addict cleaned up his act, right? And he and he broke himself of the addiction, right? Cleaned up. He got he got um um purged, right? He purged all the drugs out of his system. And he's like, he's good now. He's like, hey man, you know, I had a hard time in my life. I was a drug addict at one point. And then let's say he after he gets cleaned up and he sees the uh the drug dealer. He don't need the drug dealer drugs anymore, but he sees that drug dealer and he remembers. He's like, man, I don't like the way he, remember the way he like, used to treat me? Man, I was down and out. I was hooked on something. And you treated me real bad knowing that I was vulnerable because I needed you. That drug addict, all of a sudden, he now he sees clearly. He sees rightly. And he won't tolerate that. Now, of course, he wouldn't go near that person ever again because he knows that's a bad deal. But when he, if he sees him out there, he might even warn other guys. He might be like, hey, man, stay away from that guy, man. Don't get hooked on his stuff. You're going to be taken for a ride. That's what we should be doing. That's what I'm doing with you guys out there. But you should be doing it with each other. Stop having sex with these women. They, they got you like drug addicts, like crack addicts. So that's my, if you want a practical step to take, that's my, that's my, and look here, I know it ain't easy. Just like it ain't easy for the drug dealer and he, for the drug addict. And here's the, here's the other thing too, man. The drug dealer, now a legitimate drug dealer He's got a lot of customers. It seems like your drug, drug dealer got some other customers too. So the drug dealer don't need the drug addict so much. Where was I going with this? <laughs> anyway. The drug dealer has got you hooked. And on the, until you get off of her drug, you're not going to be able to see rightly what's going on. That's really the bottom line of what I want to say right here, right now. So. Uh, you, all this gut feeling and stuff that you have, it's not a gut feeling. You have evidence. You say I have gut, gut feelings. She live on her own, and this man keeps showing up with gifts to her house, and she talking to him. That's not a gut feeling. That's evidence that th things ain't right. And so I'm going to stop there with that. I, I don't think you can go any further as long as you're hooked. Uh, well, I think I remember where I was going with that before. Oh, yeah, the difference between a legit drug dealer and, and your kind of drug dealer is that your kind of drug dealer woman, she gets something in return as well. Like the drug dealer gets money, but he's got a lot of different, you know, people want his drug. She gets validations from you. So she's going to do everything that she can to not get you off of her drug. So if you do a, a sex fast, so you say you stop having sex with her, it's going to make her very uncomfortable. It's going to be tough for you, but it's going to make her very uncomfortable because now you're taking her power away. And this is why women will, man, it's a tough thing. I get it. Even if it's just in your own head, they could do it to you, but it could be in your own head that, man, if I stop having sex with her, then she's going to go have sex somewhere else. If I'm not the one having sex with her, then somebody's going to have sex with her. And she might, she might do that to you. You say, oh, I don't want, I'm going to stop having sex with you. She might be like, hmm, fine. Well, then I'll get my needs met somehow. Ooh. Ooh. That's going to hurt. <laughs> That's going to hurt you. But sometimes you got to go through pain. Hey, look, you put yourself in this dumb situation by fornicating, right? So you, if you want to rid yourself of this demon, 
right? I'm not calling her a demon, but the demon that got you possessed, enchanted by her, is going to be some pain, right? Drug dealers, drug addicts have a lot of pain to go through, right? They don't just go to the methadone clinic and come out happy the next day. They go through withdrawal, right? You might have to go through withdrawal. But once you get out on the other side and you can see things as they are, you look back at this and you'd be like, how dumb was I? You're going to do that. I guarantee you. You get out, you do what I say, and you go through the pain because it's going to be pain. It's going to be pain. It's going to be pain. If you try to avoid the pain, well, you're just going to be simple. You're just going to stay that way. Right? You're going to drag it out and you're going to be miserable. You come back to me five years later and be like, oh, man, things ain't going good. I'm like, why? Because you weren't willing to go through the pain of withdrawal. You go through the pain of withdrawal now. You're going to look back, even at this video, maybe, maybe I'll put this on YouTube and you watch this video, and you go back and watch it again, and you'll be like, man, I can't believe I was so dumb. I can't believe I just dealt with that. Why did I deal with that? Why did I, why did I let her do that to me? Anyway, I think, I think you got a lot more options, and I think you need to drop this hot potato. Duck. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.